Hey guys, my name is Haley, and I'm still really behind on wrap-ups, so we're gonna do another one of my wrap-ups today and hopefully wrap up all of the books from the rest of these readathons that took three weeks because I read so much and then I haven't been able to film, so we're just gonna jump right on into it. So the first book I was able to read for, I think it was the 7 and 7 readathon, are we still back there? Oh my gosh, that was like two months ago. But anyway, the first book I finished for that was Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson and I actually listened to this on audiobook, which I highly recommend that audiobook. It was really, really good. And so I ended up buying it in a physical edition because I really enjoyed it. I really liked the anxiety and like panic attack representation in this. I found it very, very relatable and I also just really liked our main character and our like cast of characters in general so I gave this four out of five stars and I'm really excited for the second book in this series to come out and I'm glad to finally have read one of Maureen Johnson's books because I fo I've followed her on Twitter for years and I love her I think she's hilarious next up I finished The Foxhole Court by Nora Sakovic and this is one I read on ebook and then immediately bought the physical edition because I loved this so much more than I was expecting to like it's very dark it's very very brutal and the characters are very very messed up so be aware of that going into it because there's a ton of trigger warnings for things in here and some of the characters are just really kind of all kinds of messed up and I'm really scared to see what they're gonna do in the rest of this series because I've heard the other two books are even more brutal and just messed up so <laughs> I am looking forward to finishing this trilogy. I gave this 4.25 out of 5 stars. Next up was a little bit of a disappointment and that is Many Waters by Madeline Langle. I've talked before about how I really like A Wrinkle in Time. It's one of my favorite books of all time and I really like A Wind in the Door as well but so far the rest of the companion quintet has not been my favorite. I didn't like the third book either and I didn't like this fourth book and there's a fifth one that I'm not even gonna buy. Like I might finish off the quintet and listen to the last book on audio somewhere but I'm probably not gonna buy it because this follows Sandy's and Denny's which is Meg and Charles Wallace's older brothers I believe. Meg might be the oldest. It's the middle twin brothers and I just didn't care about their story nearly as much as I care about Meg or Charles Wallace so yeah this was kind of like Noah and the Ark set like they get sent back in time. It was really weird. I didn't really like it so I gave it two stars. I read Exit Pursued by a Bear by E.K. Johnston. This is a book I've wanted to read for the longest time ever since I heard about what it was about. It's about a girl who goes to a cheerleading camp and she gets raped. She gets date raped so she doesn't remember getting raped by this guy from another school or she thinks it might be someone from another school and it's like a mystery of her trying to figure out who it was and how she's going to deal with the consequences of what happened and how it might mess up her life. It's very, very, very sad and very angry. <laughs> like it made me angry as a female just because of the subject matter that this can happen and this does happen and it's really frustrating to see how other people react to this type of situation and how some people can be so, so mean about it. And it was really infuriating to read at times, but I really, really loved this. And I bought a physical edition because I listened to this on audio as well. Next, I read Pines by Blake Crouch. This is a trilogy I've been wanting to read for a very long time because I love Blake Crouch's Dark Matter, which I read... I don't remember if it was last year or the year before, but it's like one of my favorite books of all time. So I really wanted to read some of his older books. And like this reads like a regular murder mystery for a lot of it. And then all of a sudden it's just suddenly so much more than that. And I'm not going to say anything else because this book will blow your mind once you reach the end of it. But it was great. I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. And then for the 7 and 7 readathon, I was trying to find two more really quick things to finish for the readathon. So I read this graphic novel that I've had for a long time called The Empty Man, and I hated it. <laughs> it was just really boring and really basic, and the art is like, it's fine. 
I just, I really didn't like it. I didn't like the subject matter. So I finished it, but literally only because it counted towards the readathon. And I'm gonna like immediately unhaul it. So one star. <laughs> and then last for the seven and seven readathon, I finished volume two of Hawkeye called Little Hits. And I actually really like the first collection of this uh, graphic novel series. And I've just never bought the other ones, so I found it on Hoopla and just read through it on there. And it was really fun. I really like Matt Fraction's humor. So, yeah. I gave this about a 3.25 stars. It's a really fun series, and I am going to continue on Hoopla if I can find them. Okay, now we're getting into the Booktubeathon wrap-up. Finally, I'm almost caught up on my wrap-ups besides the books that I've read since those readathons, which is still a decent amount, but... I will be less behind. <laughs> but the first book I finished for Booktubeathon that I read in one sitting was Wayward by Blake Crouch, which is the second book in the Pines or the Wayward Pines trilogy. I can't even say anything about the rest of this trilogy because it's a huge spoiler, but this was by far my favorite of the three. And it was so fast paced and I sat down thinking, oh, I'm gonna read maybe 50, 100 pages of it, read the whole thing in like two hours. The next book I finished for Booktubeathon was All Our Wrong Todays, which was actually the first book I started, I believe, because I listened to this one on audio, even though I had already owned the hardcover. And this is a very mixed bag for me. I liked the concept. I liked the time travel. I liked the idea of, like, you're living in the wrong timeline and it was supposed to go this way and he ends up in a different timeline and has to go back and try and fix it like it's very back to the future-y but a lot of the plot revolved around like a romance between him and some girl and that I was not at all about because it was very insta lovey and weird and I was like mm, I don't know about that but I did really like the ending of this like the way the time travel was handled towards the end, which I'm not going to give away because it's a huge spoiler, was really, really interesting and not in a way that I normally see it portrayed. So I did give this probably a 3, 3.5 stars. I don't know if I'm going to keep it, but it was an enjoyable read if you want to get into more sci-fi. Next up, I finished in one sitting the Illustrated Chamber of Secrets, which I immediately sat and watched the movie afterwards and it was so much fun. I haven't seen Chamber of Secrets in a while. So I'm really excited to be continuing with these illustrated editions. I don't know if Goblet of Fire comes out this year or not. If anybody does know that, let me know down in the comments. But I am excited to read Prisoner of Azkaban because if you didn't know, Prisoner of Azkaban is my favorite. It's up there somewhere. But this was really enjoyable. The illustrations, as always with these, are just beautiful, and I had a good time. And then I read The Last Town by Blake Crouch, which is the third and final book in the Wayward Pines trilogy. And this wasn't quite as crazy as the second book, Wayward, but I did read it just as fast as I read the first two, so <laughs> I gave this one a four stars because there was like a weird love triangle type thing that I've seen in so many post-apocalyptic or even like sci-fi or high stakes things. Like I specifically compared it to The Walking Dead and like the first season or two of The Walking Dead, which if you watch that show and know about that love triangle, this is exactly what that is. So yeah, that was a little frustrating, but it didn't take too much precedence. So it wasn't super bad but I did find it annoying. <laughs> but I gave this one about a 4.25 stars. Ooh, now time for an unpopular opinion for a lot of people. <laughs> I read, oh, I read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I actually listened to it on audiobook because I thought it being her telling her life story that it would be better on audio, which I don't think I would have finished it if it weren't for the audio. So that was probably a good idea. I did not like Evelyn as a character. I didn't like any of our characters actually, except for, oh my gosh, what was his name even? This was like a month and a half ago. It was Evelyn's best friend. That was a guy and I liked him. I thought his character was interesting, but I did not care for any of the other characters. Her one best friend, I think her name's Celia. 
I hated. Like, I could not stand her. I thought she was very, very problematic in a lot of the things that she would say to Evelyn and to other people and things that she did. And Evelyn herself was problematic, which I think was on purpose. And I don't know if Celia's was on purpose, but I really did not like her. This just felt very soap opera drama-y, like old Hollywood drama, which I should have realized I wouldn't like. But everybody was raving about this, so I gave in to the hype. And surprise, surprise, I didn't like it. <laughs> so I gave this 2.5 out of 5 stars. Second to last book I read for the book Tubathon was Tattoo Atlas. I thought I would like it, but I didn't think I would love it the way that I loved this. This is a sci-fi book that is based on what is essentially a school shooting. And there is a scientist who is our main character's mother who thinks she has come up with a device. If the angle changed at all, I just got a phone call. Problems of recording on your phone. <laughs> but I was talking about Tattoo Atlas. So our main character, his mother, thinks she's come up with a device that you can implant in someone's brain to help with psychopathic tendencies or like things that would cause someone to do something like not have empathy. And also one of the people that was killed in the school shooting was one of his best friends. So he's very, very, very involved in this whole situation with the school shooting. And his life kind of just starts to spiral out of control. So it's like half murder mystery, half like teen angsty drama. And then a huge part of it is like this really serious subject matter about the school shooting itself and the character that did the shooting is a huge part of this story which I've never ever seen so I found that really fascinating and I read this in like a couple of hours in one setting maybe two sittings but it was so fast-paced I've read Tim Florine's other book Willful Machines which I also really liked but not nearly as much as this one I don't think I think he just does this like YA sci-fi really really well and I definitely recommend his books so I gave this 4.75 out of 5 stars. And then last, but definitely not least, I read Through the Window, which is the Dear Evan Hansen libretto as well as info on the cast and the crew and the whole production group. And this is just beautiful. Like, it's got the blue stained edges. It's got the embossed Through the Window on the front. It's got these high quality photo pictures, photo pictures, <laughs> these high quality photos from like the actual production on Broadway. And it gives you a lot of insight on how this play and this musical was put together and like how the book was written and who worked on it and how a musical comes into being, especially one like this. And I feel like Dear Evan Hansen is one of those shows that's just really inclusive with its fans which I love like there's a scene in the middle of the show called you will be found that involves the internet and like they use their screens and they sent out like the creative team of this show sent out a call for videos of fans of the show to like take a clip of them saying you will be found or a picture of them saying you will be found and they would put them up on the screens and it's just really cool i i love this show I, you've heard me rave about it a couple times because i just read the libretto not that long ago but five out of five stars i think every show should have one of these show books because i adore them they're my favorite thing ever <laughs> So yeah, this is my wrap up for 7 and 7 and Booktubeathon. Finally, it's here. I finally did the wrap up, guys. <laughs> but thank you all for watching and I will see all of you guys next time.